Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales of the Space. Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. Void Sailors, written by Indie Kid 1011 Spaceborn, a concept nearly unheard of by most galactic species. Making portals between planets was how hundreds of races had colonized their second planet. Of course, not to discredit satellites. Most species had those, after all. It was easier to see other planets without atmospheric interference. But for us, the Kenantari, about 200 solar cycles ago, came across a pulse. This pulse came from deep space. We assumed it was just background radiation, until one particularly lucky radio operator switched to a usually unused frequency. It was the first time that we'd heard such a collection of sound noise repetitively played with guttural vocalization. As soon as they appeared and heard, they disappeared. We thought it coincidental, after all. As soon as it had appeared, it had left. One hundred cycles ago, at the start of the colonization of the second solar system, the noise came again. We reached out, trying to find this mysterious being or beings. They left before we received a response. They had earned a reputation for their brief appearance. They sailed the void as we do our oceans. Fifty cycles, we received a message, made in a way we expected. We received a satellite in orbit of our homeworld, and it worked like a bottle filled with a book. They gave us all the information about them, and we could translate none of it. We called out and asked for something more. Then nothing. No noise from the void. Thirty cycles after they gave us our answer, we had established communication with several other species. Just like us, they made portals from planet to planet. Just like us, they had the void sailors' information, but no way to decipher it. Twelve cycles ago, we found them. One of their systems, at least. The planet they seemed to emanate from was deeper in the system. We got to the second planet in the system, and that was when we saw it. The world had a ring around it. Not like any planet that we had a ring or gas or rock, but it was a solid ring built to observe the planet. We found a settlement not far from where we had teleported to, and we established first contact. They called themselves humans, and they welcomed us with open arms. We'd struggled to translate their language. They knew ours long before we had noticed them. The data drones they had left us had not been made for information, but rather to watch us. The information we found was something else. It was what they called their net. With our new knowledge and friends, we listened to them and their songs from the void. They may call themselves humans, but to us, the void is unwelcoming, untouchable by our hands. But they are, they are the void sailors. And we wouldn't dare to change our new status quo. For we walked the soil, and they sail the seas where only the solar winds blow. End of story. Story number two. The Vengeance of Humanity. Written by Hatchet Hyde. More records have been recorded. Young Carl Poff, official record keeper. First class of the High Library Committee of the Valosia Commerce Union. To start, I should preface that while we call ourselves a commerce me union, we are also more than happy to go to war. Our merchant vessels being more akin to warships of other species. To borrow the human expression, we practice gunboat diplomacy in our negotiations, destroying ships that threaten our trade and blockade worlds that would dare to challenge us. It was supposed to be a simple matter. Zux Roth, the Lord Captain, Royal Class Merchant, would blockade the world known as Vulcan, destroy the warships it had, and take control of the assets and resources of the world, enslave and sell the locals if they did not submit. Attention to the inhabitants of Vulcan. Your world is now the property of the Verlosha Commerce Union. Submit to us, and you will be integrated into our society. Resist and become slaves. You have one standard day to respond. Zuxroff stated in a smug tone as he broadcast over all standard frequencies. We knew of the humans. 
They kept to themselves and were rarely seen outside of the solar system. In our hubris, we acted as we always had. Swoop in, would shatter the economy and take what we wanted. No one could stand in our way. We made and sold everything in our part of the galaxy. The only ones that equaled us, the Guthura Alliance. It wasn't long until the human response came. I am High Counselor Sarah of Vulcan. You have entered human space and threatened a Class One garden world. As per the Articles of Interplanetary Diplomacy, you have one standard day to leave our system. The nerve of this primate, Zoxroth stated in his contempt. All stations prepare for combat, Zoxroth stated into his holopad, causing an announcement. Every one of the crew had gotten into positions. The assault team, the ship gunners, the official record keepers, such as myself, got ready for what we had done for millennia. We glassed what we thought were factories, creating weapons and ships, and then glassed what we thought were troops barracks. We took the planet in less than a standard day. We laughed as this had been the easiest conquest in recorded history. The people would be made slaves. Our economy would surely profit nicely from the new slaves in the markets. It was not long before the transmission from the Gothuri High Command came through. We expected this, as this area of space was close to theirs. I will dispense all formalities and pleasantries. I need to make this point clear. Leave the humans alone. Leave this space as fast as you can. If you have attacked them, surrender immediately. Gotharan, High Commander, stated in what looked to be desperation. As per our treaty, this sector of space is neutral, and we are within treaty law to claim it. Should you declare war on us for this acquisition, we shall sue you for treaty violation. Zofroth replied, You must understand me. We will not go to war. The humans will. The Gotharan High Commander stated. Then the feed was cut. Truly, how far have they fallen to be afraid of these primates? Zofroth asked me. I laughed with him. We thought it was funny how the mighty alliance was afraid of these silly humans. Oh, how wrong we were. As it turned out, Vulcan was a civilian world made up of mostly farmers and human civilization. Well, in a word, unspected. It was an imperial republic, a senate with an emperor at the head. This information came all too late. We had moved onto other worlds in system, and then the nearest human settlement systems, blasting from orbit, then ground troops to mop up the remains and capture slaves. On the fourth system, waiting for us was a massive fleet of warships, entire asteroids converted into anti-ship gun batteries. What followed next was what I can assure you, genuinely terrifying. The weapons of the human ships tore through our most advanced ships, a mix of lasers melting our hulls and kinetic weapons tearing of vessels apart. Zuxroth ordered his ships to fall back to the previous system and wait for reinforcements. At last, we thought as we emerged from hyperspace, we would be ready this time. No surprising us with your weapons this time. Word had been sent to the Velorsha Commerce Union. They had ordered us back to the first planet to wait for reinforcements. In a matter of days, the largest fleet of the Velorsha Commerce Union had been assembled. One thousand ships ready for war. We would destroy the humans for their insolence. They would no longer be slaves, but cattle for our carnivorous pets. We had prepared to return to the system that we had fled, thinking that was all that they could muster and would not risk chasing us. As we got ready to set off, a human armada, 100 times the size of ours, emerged from hyperspace and immediately began tearing our ships apart. It was a slaughter. The human ships carved a path of death through us. Of the 1,000 ships, only six managed to return home. I now knew why the Gotharan High Commander was so eager to have us leave human space. They were monsters. As frightening as they are in space, on the ground, they are so much more terrifying. Each soldier is in what they call an enhanced strength battle suits. The standard infantry round is 14.5 millimeters by 114 millimeters. Once I had left the ship, I made my way to my private world on the other side of the galaxy. 
I knew the humans would be coming. I was not, however, expecting such hatred. We had destroyed a peaceful garden world full of families. To them, the ultimate crime. One that they would repay one thousandfold. I watched on Galnet as human soldiers landed on our worlds and destroyed them. Their infantry rifles making short work of our troops. Human heavy weapons, human tanks, human bombers, fighters, and dreadnoughts made ours look like toys. The galaxy watched in horror as this empire of humanity wiped out each of our worlds, getting everyone on them. We expected them to do this to one or two planets as a show of force, make us surrender, but no offer came. Every communication we sent was ignored. Our fleeing and surrendering troops gunned down like animals. When the human flagship Imperial Earth Navy ship Julius Caesar had arrived in our home world, I, we, the galaxy, learned just how hateful the humans were. The human emperor and the senate had ordered magnum interitum, or grand extermination on our species. They showed us what glassing a planet was, if you could even call it that. Hundreds of thousands of nuclear weapons unleashed across our home world, but not even then did they stop. Once everyone was dead, they used kinetic accelerators to fire massive asteroids into Velocia, cracking the crust of the planet, causing the core to spill out. Then they left, without a word, gone like shadows into the night. They returned to their home sector of space. I wish that we had never gone after that sector of space. Curiously, though, in their vengeance, only those of our species and our allies were slaughtered. Slave species had been freed, using their own ships to take them to safe worlds. Most systems would let human ships through, having seen what they could do. To their relief, it was to drop off those that they had freed. I write this as I sit in a refugee camp in the Alliance, my wealth and status gone. Had the Alliance not taken pity on what few of the Volortians remain, I would have surely died in a street gutter or in any way long ago. I hope that one day that this record serves as a warning that we never truly had to warn any new species of humans and why they should be left alone in their little corner of the galaxy. Where I hope they remain. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click, click, click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Feudic Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Band 420, Lord Azrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.